Okay, Mr. Palmer here recording uh, another video for you on Bacchus Nawa form. Uh, this one will be followed up by videos on lexical and syntactical analysis. Okay, so uh, big questions for this little video are why is Bacchus Nawa form needed? And then basically, can you create and apply a Bacchus Nawa form to describe the rules of a language? So, some basic terminology before I move on with this. Okay, so grammar basically refers to the syntax and structure of a particular language, right? It can also, in some cases, refer to the semantics or the meaning. Right? Natural language is a language that is developed naturally through use. So, for example, uh, like English, French, Chinese, Japanese, whatever it is. Okay, like people just making sounds. Sounds meant start to stand for things, and then uh, uh, rules were then acquired uh, or developed for managing the language all right so sin and th those rules are the syntax okay how do you uh, arrange the words and phrases to create well-formed sentences and so that then applies to computer languages okay so uh the analysis of a language is not a new thing uh, this guy um was busy doing this uh somewhere between the seventh to the fourth century bc okay so two and a half thousand years ago and he came up with 3959 rules for sanskrit all right so natural languages you can see are quite complex uh, they've developed over time hence their complexity all right if you compare that to uh, computer languages which are artificial languages they are not that difficult to um, describe because they they're much more limited in nature okay so this is um, John Bacchus and Peter now they came up with um, Bacchus now formed the describing for describing the uh, the function of uh, the describing how algo works okay so basically BNF is a meta language okay so it's a language for describing another language the reason for using meta languages basically are first of all uh, it allows you to determine whether a series of characters is valid all right uh, that means that you can then generate well-formed statements in that language okay instead of doing X equals 5 you might be writing 5 equals X and wondering why that doesn't work all right so you, you're able to write code that is correct and then it then allows your uh, high-level statements to be broken down into their individual operations into their small parts which can then be broken down into machine code operations that the CPU can execute all right now uh, backers now form deals with terminals and non terminals right so terminals basically are symbols that can appear in the output of a language all right but and they, they appear because of the rules of a language so whatever's in the syntax in the grammar of a language but the terminals can't be changed by the rules themselves whereas non-terminals are syntactic entities that define a part of the grammar and they can be changed by the rules okay they're created from by the rules you're going to be like what well this is what it means like oh so this is what, what this is an example so you can see what i mean sorry i'm very very tired at the moment right so for example uh, the non-terminal digit is defined by and that's what that colon colon equals means in the middle is so digit is defined by 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 etc 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 okay so the non-terminals are on the always on the left hand side okay digit is a non-terminal it can change all right and it can is changed because it is defined by whatever's on the right hand side that doesn't mean that everything on the right hand side is a terminal okay because you can use non terminals to define other terminals but you can see that uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 can't be broken down further by the rules of the language they are the basic things they can't um, uh, be, be uh, you know deconstructed further so that's the non terminal these are the terminals in this particular rule okay um excuse me so if we develop that further if digit is defined by 0 to 9 then i can say that integer is defined by digit or digit digit that means that i can now produce integers by simply replacing the uh, syntactic entity on the left so that would give me 4 0 15 99 these are all valid uh, integers D as defined by my rule above okay but if I wanted to store 673 my rule at the moment wouldn't let me do that so how could I develop this rule further 
a revised rule will be to do something like integer as defined by digit or digit integer so you can see now this becomes a recursive rule because in uh, an integer can be defined by the use of an integer this would then let me you uh, have uh, I could then produce uh, a 1 a 21 521 651 and due to the recursive nature of this I could produce an infinite an, an, uh, an integer in, of infinite range um, notice I'm using the word produce because sometimes uh, rules are referred to as producers hang on a minute producers productions producers I would say they're referred to as producers nope rules can be called productions I just check my uh, my notes okay um, and uh, because they produce things all right if uh, we could expand that say if I had a basic rule which defined letter I said letter is defined as a b c d e f g onwards okay I could then say a word is defined by a letter or letter word because then that would let me uh, have a recursive definition of word which would allow me to create a word which is of infinite letters in length okay so what we want to do is we're gonna have a quick play right we're gonna define our own language and we're gonna call it our alright in our I'm gonna say that a digit is defined by 0 to 9 and an integer is, is defined by digit or uh, oh, that should be digit integer okay I'm not going to go back and re-record this but you could that should say digit integer for the second part of this now we can continue by um, adding some more rules so for example arithmetic operator could be defined by plus or minus a multiplication mult op could be defined by multiple uh, asterisk or forward slash if we um, add another set of rules now I could say letter is defined by a or b or c so on and so forth and an identifier is defined by letter or letter identifier okay so that allows me to create uh, identifiers of uh, several letters now if I wanted to define a multiplication using those rules that I had earlier I could say that multiplication is equal to identifier or identifier times multiplication op sorry ad or identifier multiplication op identifier alright so that oh I could also then go on to have um, expressions so if you just look only at the top line at the moment I could say expression is defined by identifier or identifier and the expression operator which could be plus or minus mult so that would give me valid expressions of a because a is an identifier a plus b times c because a is an identifier an expression operator would be plus or minus and then mult is defined by uh, a variable or a variable multiplication mult, mult, multiplication operator variable and the same applies for d uh, e minus e divided by f what I wouldn't be able to create are simple expressions like a plus b a minus 5 a plus b minus c etc so uh, what how can I now refine this uh, set of rules a bit further if I was going to redefine it what I basically need to do is I need to redefine uh, my expression operator and it will allow me to instead of only using um, uh, mult in there I need to basically be able to use any term uh, a, vari a variable a constant another expression or a multiplication a mult okay so if I'm going to redefine this first of all I need to create I'm going to create something called a term right so term is defined by it could be an identifier it could be an integer because I've got integers um, defined in my uh, in my grammar in my syntax or it could be an expression in brackets um, or it could be a negative term so here again is a recursive definition it could be um, I'm using term so therefore I could have an integer and then I could have the uh, negative of that so minus 5 I'm then going to redefine my uh, multiplication operator my mult so mult is now defined as term or term mult op mult so that would allow me to have um, a term followed by uh, a multiplication or division and then another um, either a term or a multiplication operation and then so that rule would allow me to do something like a times b divided by 5 I could then redefine my expression and say expression is defined by being a term or 
an identifier with an expression op and a malt. So well that's a mistake as well, isn't it? It should be term or term expression op malt because then that would allow any one of those possible uh, um, expressions okay and even more complex ones you could have a go at trying to create them but you can see how the rules of the language even through my mistakes here you can on this you can see how the rules of the language basically um, define what you can and can't do by, by by only having in in the definition of expression having identify it means you would only be able to use um, uh, an identifier a b c or d whereas by replacing identifier with term you would be able to use constants um, as well because you'll be able to use an integer there okay so um, big question is where why is back now form needed so you should be thinking about what are the reasons for using a meta language to describe another language okay so the checking for correct form and then breaking down an expression into into its constituent parts so that it can be then turned into machine code and then you should be able to look at some um, practice examples um, from exam for example from past papers etc and textbooks and um, create and apply um, BNF to describe the rules of a language alright thank you very much and watch out for the next video on um, lexical and syntactical analysis